Hey friends, it's Brian and it's time for another Jeep video. Today's video is Jeep number 67. I think we're finally gonna get the engine mounts installed. Woo! So if you're uh, new to the channel, um, be sure to check out my playlist Jeep build. It's about the build of the salvage Jeep that I bought from Copart about 18 months ago. And we're gonna get it running here hopefully very soon. Um, if you enjoy the video, remember to hit that like button, and you can also subscribe to the channel, and if you hit the bell icon, you'll find out when I release new videos. And be sure to let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I actually enjoy reading the comments when they're respectful and pleasant. Even if you don't agree with me, I enjoy reading the comments sometimes. All right, so, um, I managed to get this ground off yesterday. We're gonna get that. Um, put back in. Um, I did talk to Brown Dog Off-Road. I had a really great conversation with them today. They were actually out off-roading um, this weekend, so that's why I didn't hear from them. And I found a paint that more or less matches. So, you know, it's not a perfect match, but it's damn close. And this is good enough. Um, so I need to get this bolt out of here. Um, let me get started, and we'll take it from there. So... First things first, this one's gotta come out and it's kind of a tight clearance to get this in here. So, whatever. Um, there we go. So that one's out and the paint's still a little sticky. I don't know if we need this or not. So let's just see what this looks like. I don't think that's enough. So I, I just don't think that's gonna do it here. So we're gonna, let me uh, get set up. We're, we're gonna put this together. And uh, I guess the next thing we need to do is put the bushings back in. All right. That's awesome. Imagine if the factory had designed mounts that were this easy to service. Oh wait, that might have cost them another fucking five dollars. Anyway, so let's get this installed. Oh, we need some hardware first. Lock nut and a washer. Or, you know. So I think for this to go right, we really don't need that bolt, but we do need this. So let's go ahead and put this in. And of course, this is going to be something of a pain in the ass. Of course, it will. So, um, I'm going to drag the engine forward a little bit and probably down. ratchet strap doesn't take a ton of force but it, it acts like an extra set of hands and Okay. 
So the real issue here is we just gotta pull this into place. And really, let's just go ahead and do the whole, um, I'm gonna put the center bolt in because this is actually what I couldn't get in before. All right, so let me make sure I'm gonna be able to get a wrench in there. Yep, that, that I can still get a wrench in there. At this point, I might as well just lower it a little bit. All right, so there's that. Now I need to go underneath and um, of course I'm missing a flat washer, so let me see where that washer and let me start this from the bottom got one more to do and this one's going to be substantially more difficult because it's got to come up from the bottom Okay, so uh, I would like a little more light here. And I think I'm gonna do this from above because I think the struggle is gonna be up here. Uh, hmm. camera because I don't think that, um, I, don't, I don't think this is going to help us any what that's to
Now, it would be better if this came in from the top, but I just don't see that. So, let me... figure out how to get back in here and not coming up with a ton of good ideas. Just getting to the point where I have So, 17 millimeters and uh, 11 sixteenths, which is just below 17 millimeters. <laughs> and I was afraid that might happen, but I can't see anything under here. Indeed. There are, of course, two ways to do everything. And let me see what it's going to take to do this from below.
this really takes two people is what this takes. Probably why they welded one of the nuts on. It's just I can't get to anything. spinning down here and all right this is blinding me So next we need to undo this cross bolt because I need more I, I need more clearance um, which isn't really a big deal so we'll just pick the motor up no well, maybe not we're gonna pick the whole vehicle up this way We 
deal. Again, I just can't reach it. That's that's the issue here is uh, I can't reach anything. Oh, I managed to get that one. Hot dog. Too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wasn't that lucky? Try again. Oh, other side. This one's going to be kind of difficult. I mean, a flag nut would be easier um, for this kind of situation, but that's not what we've got, so we're going to work with what we've got. Next magic trick. Let's see if we can get uh, this to tighten. a moment of unsupported victory. Let's pull the engine stand out. Yeah, a little more. been a long time since this engine has been on this frame in this vehicle and we're really close to the point at which it's going to run.
So, um... needs to be dealt with and um, that's probably what that other strange bolt was what I think this is. No. Yes. Alright. Oh, that goes to that. That doesn't go to this. It's the same size though. things I've gotten in the habit of doing is putting these on zip tie and then zip tying them to the hoist so I can find them again if I need them. is that there's an extra hole back here that locks the uh, pins in place. And that's kind of nice.
then they can't fall forward and hit you in the head. All right, so it seems to be like a great place to take a little break. I'm gonna wash my hands, use the restroom, and then I'm gonna torque these down. Okay, so the torque spec for this is nice and tight. Let's do the other side. Of course. Uh, so I can't get the angle on this, so I'm going to add some extensions and see if that helps. I just can't reach over the uh, fender and down and have enough uh, leverage. <clears throat> That's tight anyway. All right, let me uh, do the bottom piece. sweep under here. So let me uh, get the dirt out before I kind of crawl in it. I'm so used to having the engine stand's been in here. It's been, it's been a few weeks since I've had a clear space underneath the Jeep. two hands. I was hoping that I could just wedge this in here, but Alright, 
So, engine always on that uh, driver's side, so I'm gonna slide under this side. There we go. So, uh, we're looking pretty good here. Um, Alright, so uh, it's time for some exciting moments. Uh, we've got, you know, that's not going to fit there. I don't know where that goes yet. Oh, that goes to the ignition. So we get to start putting things back together. I'm looking for my flyers that pull trim. I don't know quite what I've done with them. Alright, I found them. They were in the driver's seat. So there is a anchor point bracket on the back of the alternator. And uh, that's shot, so we're going to replace it. We'll see if we can get a 6.3 in here, but almost everything on this Jeep has been a 5.6. Yep, yeah, that's going to be a 5.6 as well. Good. Let's get zip tie in here. Thank you. 
second anchor here, but I don't know where this one's supposed to go. So, I'm just going to leave it loose. See if this is salvageable. I think I can salvage this. I think the trick is to run a a new zip tie through here. So that's the trick there. So let's put this back in and bring the wiring up where it's supposed to go. Actually, you know what? I think that needs to be spun around 180 degrees. So let's do that. This is going to go to the alternator. I think that's a 14 millimeter. A 13. All right. Okay, so we've got this, and we just don't know where this goes. So I'm going to zip tie that there. The bigger question is, do I? No, I'm gonna leave that one. Do these. I want to say that was a 17. Let me double check. Let me see 
assume it's a three quarter. It is. And the next magic question is where did I set the three quarter inch wrench? Mm -hmm. I ought to have at least five more of those around here somewhere. Here we go. And I'm going to run this in most of the way with a power tool because it is way faster. close to being right and just require a little bit of adjustment at this point. So Brown Dog wants these to be uh, just tight enough to spin by hand and that's a little too tight right now. So we're going to loosen it just ever so slightly. is uh, a little too loose, so we'll tighten it just a smidge. So I can just barely tighten it, so that's I'm gonna call that good. All right. Um, so next up, we have a bunch of connectors back here on the firewall that need attention, and well, we also have this. I think that's a 13 millimeter. So let's let's go ahead and get this connected. is a 13 millimeter. looking pretty good over here. Um, one of the things that needs to happen is we need to deal with all these up top. Not quite ready to deal with these, um, but I think that's what needs to happen next. I've also got some ground wires that need attention back here and I'm not 100% sure where all these go. Um, This is sometimes the difficult part about having worked on the Jeep, is not knowing 100%. I, I gotta put the puzzle back together. And those are all the wires I'm talking about. Okay, so we've got this uh, inconvenient little 
bracket for the AC lines. So we'll go ahead and slide this on. That is a 17 millimeter. So we'll, I'm just going to tighten it with a wrench. I want to take that back. No, that's a 17 millimeter. There we go. Okay. Folks, so we're gonna start working on all these wires and figuring out where they go. What? Oh, son of a bitch. You gotta be fucking kidding me. That needs to come down, so let's deal with that. Connectors there. I've got I'm pretty sure that goes down there, but I don't see the other piece of it. Go there too. Yes, that's right. This is the wire 
certainly wants to go in that spot. see what the text was. All right, so pull this out of here because it's not doing anything anymore. Put some more gloves on and work on this side of the engine. All right, so this is going to have to come off in order to open this. Let's see how that opens. on this shit because you can't get you can't get in here.
know 100% where this goes. Well, I'll figure this out in a minute. It goes down there. All right. Well, this doesn't go up here, so that heads down there. This heads into this neighborhood. there. All right, I'm beginning to feel a little better here. One. which is, of course, going to be difficult and buried. here because I don't see anything else in this neighborhood that it would connect to. Maybe not. There's another wire here. That fits this. Okay, so we still don't know what this does. This goes here. All right. And what's this go to? Well, maybe these two go together. Nope. Well, I guess there's stuff that I haven't found yet. All right. So in the front of the engine. Yes. Don't know what that's for yet. Guessing that one of these comes down here. that. Let's 
still don't know what this is for. Or this. So I've got a few extra connectors here. But I've also got some stuff on the firewall that's not here right now. That goes down because clearly there's something there. There's a connector there, but I don't know what it goes to yet. Another connector. And there's some stuff missing here too. So I think we're good for this to go back on. All right. And I'm just going to set all of this up here. All right, so I've got this and this, which you can just set here for now. And yeah, I mean, clearly some of this is going to plug in here. This goes yet, but uh, this one's going to go to the over here, so we'll just leave it up there. Um, okay, so I've got some decisions to make. Um, let me see where these bolts are because they're ready to go in. So over a year ago, I took these bolts out and I wrote down what they went to. And that's probably the only reason that I can remember where they are and what they go to. And I was really careful to not disturb where the bolts were. I need to get a um, small socket. This will work. You know what? I don't trust these not to go anywhere, so I'm going to add Loctite to them because they don't they don't look like they're terribly strong. Um, fasteners. So a little blue thread lock is not going to hurt anything. It looks like that one's dry. It is substantially easier to work on this with the fender off, but that time is coming to an end. I don't know if I'm going to put it on tonight. Uh, in fact, actually, you know what? I know I'm not going to put it on tonight because simpler working on this without the interference from that. I've still got to do the exhaust and it is a pain in the ass.
that lets the thread lock lets me be comfortable not putting a lot of force on this. Um, all right, so what's next? Windshield washer pump. So all that stuff will come together later. Um, I don't remember what that's for. Oh, that's the air conditioning sensor. I don't know what these are for. I guess we'll find out when we get to putting all this back together. And we've got a damaged vacuum line, so we'll have to figure out what that is. Uh, probably not the only one that's damaged. Um, but it's just cruise control. Not not very concerned about that. Um, so the next thing I think would be uh, the power steering return hose. Fuck. You know, no, this this can wait. Um, it can just sit down here. Uh, the problem is I don't know which uh, connector that hose goes to. Really need to work on the air conditioning lines, but I'm not, that's another I'm not ready for it project. Um, air conditioning not hooked up just doesn't change the price of tea in China. So I think these come up and go to these. All right, so let me move this out of the way for a minute. Two and four and four. Okay, so I've got one. Let's see where the other one is. These are my emissions connections. So let me plug these in. Having these in the right place is actually quite rather important. So one of my challenges is I have a damaged line here for the vapor return and um, it's damaged in a bunch of places. This is actually salvageable here, but This piece here got melted, and so it really needs to come off of here. And they don't sell these pieces for whatever genius reason. Uh, let me see if I can cut that off. is to replace this with uh, some fuel hose. And that's kind of what I'm leaning towards. Heat 
shrink. All right, so there's a piece of it. More heat shrink. There it goes. So this is just absolutely fried. The body shop fucked up and melted it. And um, not repairable. Caution. Fuel flammable. Not repairable. So uh, it's a vapor hose. I uh, just have a hard time paying a hundred dollars for this when I think that I could put this here and come off this with a piece of um, a little piece of uh, fuel hose um, 90 degree another piece of fuel hose and I'm working my way back to that fitting uh, I just think this thing could be replaced um, I think it's worth a shot. Worst case, I'm at $100, but I really don't want to spend $100. I'm not going to connect this yet because I need to drain the fuel tank. Throw that away. And where is my caliper? So it's 9.4 or 0.37. So I'm going to go with 10 millimeters. Um, let me see if I can find some 10 millimeter fuel hose. I'll be right back. Okay, so we'll say two inches here, eight inches there, another 10 inches and another three inches. So that's 20, so two feet of hose. All right, let me get that. All right, I'm gonna run over to O'Reilly and pick up these items and I'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so I've got some clamp elbows, some clamps, and some hose. So let's make this happen. Let me go find uh, some tools for cutting this. Oh, well, I can't find my tubing cutters. So we'll just make do with this. So first things first, I need to cut basically a little two or three inch piece of this. So let me do that. So this is Gates Barricade Hose. It's a fuel injector rated hose. Even though this is this particular application is just uh, um, fuel vapor. There we go. Let's get these open. I don't know why these things always have to be so difficult to open? I can't read it, so it is what it is. So we're gonna go ahead and and um, yeah, 
moron. So that looks good there. And it really could be lower, but I want to figure out how long this next piece needs to be. I would say right there. So let me go cut this. on here and tighten it down. And this is certainly not cheaper. Well, I mean, I guess it is. It would cost me 80 bucks to get that part. Um, okay, so I'm going to flip this on here. And then um, now this is a vapor return line, so this this allows the um, fuel vapors that are collected in the little cartridge in the back somewhere to be burned by the engine during certain periods of operation. So what I've done is I put a little oil on there because I wanted this to go on smoothly and I was afraid it wouldn't. I'm not worried about a little oil consumption in the engine. think it's gonna make a difference. Let me find this bolt. I'll be right back. And again, having this labeled fuel line to intake manifold is absolutely priceless because over a year later I'm able to find these things and put them back together. And that's not something that would be easy to do if I hadn't taken the time to label these. And again, doesn't require a thread lock, but I'm going to put it on here anyway because it isn't going to hurt anything and it may make my life simpler. So let me find the socket for this and I'll be back. So this is a 10 millimeter socket in case you're keeping score at home. tight to get into where I need to get into. That's okay. So next we need another 90 in here. Where it went. Oh they're up here, that's why. 
I'll put a little bit of oil on that. That does seem to really help. operative word. So I'm just literally going to put a very small amount on here. out and see what we need here. Unfortunately that did break. Go ahead and cut this. this back into here and so all that remains is a small piece and another 90 so let me get that cut cutters would have made short work out of this.
there we go. So we're completely in, and now we just need to tighten this uh, and hope that we never have to take it apart again. So I, I think this will be just fine. I'm going to zip tie it there because I don't like shit loose under the hood. Well, this will give me something to be upset at at a later point. This doesn't contain, this doesn't carry liquid fuel, it carries vapor, which is technically the more flammable of the two. But I think that'll be fine. Um, that gets us where we need to go. And at this point, um, we'll be able to just move forward. So that's it for tonight. Uh, I think we made, I've made really good progress. Um, I don't know what that holds for. Guess I'll find out. Uh, hey, that looks like it could be a fit right there. That's it. That's what that hole's for. So that's my brake booster. And then I've still got another one down there that I'm not 100% sure what it's for, but again, I'm pretty confident that I'll find out soon. Uh, so we we'll pull this back over here because it doesn't have anything to do with the engine. Well, it doesn't have anything to do with the engine wiring. It's probably a more accurate statement. That's our fluid for the wipers. Well, um, thanks for watching. I hope that uh, this is inspirational and entertaining. Remember to like, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comments, and we will resume this project as time permits. Hopefully tomorrow uh, I'll have time to work on it. Uh, and I am looking forward to getting them back on the road. Um, you know, this rebuild has gone really well. And at this point, I'm just putting it back together. <laughs>